hi guys this is chef Jin academy welcome to this channel in this lesson i'm going to be looking at detailing of rc column this is important in our previous videos we've looked at the detailing of different kind of structural elements which include slab beams we also covered how to detail the beams you can check the link in the description of this video i'll leave the link to all those videos for your use so in order for us to be able to detail reinforced concrete column there are a quite of things you have to note so and these notes are very important and they are one of the things that will guide you in detailing of columns so the first thing is you, you have to understand the size of reinforcement that are generally used in columns according to the code either you are using the british standard or the euro code the minimum size of reinforcement allowed for column is 12 mm so you have 12 mm size you can use 16 mm you can use 20 mm you can use 25 40 depending on the markets whatever you have available in the market so the minimum size for column ranges from 12 mm upward then another thing you have to which is important is the cover to reinforcement the cover to reinforcement actually depends on the number of things but generally for column you can have a cover of 30 millimeters in situations where the condition in which the column is going to be placed is not really critical so you can have a cover of 30 mm in some situations you can even have much than that like 40 mm then another important thing is the lap length this lap length according to the bs code it actually depends on the strength of uh, the strength of your reinforcement so but because column is a compression member the lap length is taken to be 50 d the d in this case is the diameter of reinforcement so if you are using a bar size of 20 mm the lap length in which you are going to lap your reinforcement is going to be 50 times 20 in case of 20 size reinforcement we also have the size of the column starter bar the column starter bar this is referred to as the size of the lower column the starter bar is this is a is a reinforcement in a column that actually comes from the foundation so it's the one that shoot out from the foundation so that's what they call the starter bar then the size of the links the links is important and most of the time they are actually given by the code so you can have 8 mm 8 mm 10 mm 12 mm depending on the design then we also have the minimum bar the minimum area of reinforcement for columns the minimum area of reinforcement is 0.4 percent of the cross-sectional area of the concrete so whatever the cross-sectional area of the concrete is we depend 0.4 percent of it is going to be the minimum area of reinforcement that you have to provide then we have the maximum reinforcement the maximum reinforcement de determines the maximum amount of reinforcement a concrete section of column can take and this actually depends if you are using the euro code for your design the euro code specify four percent so but according to the british standard you can either have six percent or eight percent depending on the mode of construction then the last thing we talk about under the column note is the minimum number of reinforcement for any column size there is a minimum number of reinforcement you can provide if your column is rectangular in shape or square in shape four-sided the minimum reinforcement you have to provide is four so the number of reinforcement the, no, the number of minimum reinforcement you have to provide is equals to the number of edges in which you have if you have a four-sided shape column then the minimum number of reinforcement is going to be four if you have a five edges shaped column the minimum reinforcement you provide is five if you have six like that but if your column is circular the minimum number of reinforcement you have to provide is six six number so these are the things you have to note when you are detailing column then another important thing is the splicing of reinforcement so splicing of reinforcement is actually done to allow for continuity of reinforcement and generally we have three methods we have the coping in which you use mechanical coupler to couple two reinforcement together 
to allow for continuity. Then the common one, which is the most generally used, is the lapping method. This is a situation whereby you lap reinforcement together by juggling one of the reinforcements and lap it with the other one. There are some rulings regarding this lapping. We have the the minimum size, the maximum size of reinforcement in which you can lap. So according to the code, if you have a reinforcement greater than 32 mm in size, then the code will not recommend you to lap it. Then the last one is the welding. This is not really common and you might not really have enough uh, specification on them in the design standard. So let us look at an example of a column reinforcement detail. But before we look into that, if if you want to get more information about detailing of reinforcement, which can ranges for reinforced concrete structures, which include slab, beam, column, retaining wall, foundations, and all of that, you can check out my course on Udemy, which is titled Structural Detailing of RC Column Using AutoCAD. All what you need for this course is just for you to get and the AutoCAD software, which is commonly common software and easy to use and there is no need for you to have any structural detailing experience so with this course we are going to learn everything about detailing of reinforced concrete starting from slab detailing on that slab detailing you talk about different kind of slab how to detail solid slab cantilever slab how to prepare bar bedding schedule for slab you also detail irregular shapes and whenever you have openings on slab then we talk about beam detailings where we discuss detailing of simply supported beam, continuous beam, fixed beam, and deep beams. Then after each of the courses, there are exercises for you to practice. Then we also have column detailing, staircase, shear wall, foundation, retaining wall. And we're also going to show you at the end of this course how to plot structural detailings. This is important so that you can convert your card file to PDFs. I will leave the link to this course in the description of this video where you can get it and subscribe to it. Continuing with our class, let us take an example of a column detail. So the column we want to detail is this. So you can see that the size of the column, the column actually starts from the foundation. This is the foundation. We are zooming a pad size column, a pad footing for the column. And then the depth of the base of the foundation to the top of the oversight concrete is 1.3 meters which is actually giving us a uh, which is giving us 1300 millimeters in this drawing then the next thing after you have the column is the oversight concrete this is the oversight concrete generally this oversight concrete can is taken as six inches which is the same thing as 150 millimeters it depends on whatever you want the load to take then immediately after the oversight concrete you have the concrete kicker this concrete kicker actually ranges from 50 millimeters to 150 millimeters the purpose of you having a kicker is to allow for continuity of a column you know after you've arranged the foundation and you've placed the reinforcement for the for the column which is the starter bar then you cast your concrete the concrete the concrete slab will cover the whole area so you need to provide the concrete kicker in order to show to ensure the alignment of this column to the next floor so that is why this kicker is important so it's given as 75 millimeters then the next thing here is the size of the column the column is 225 by 225 then you can see that from the oversized concrete to the top of the concrete slab is three meters so and then you also have the section of the beam and this is uh the section of the of the roof beam the roof beam is 300 in size the floor beam is 450 in size after each floor you must always have a concrete kicker as i've said the size ranges from 50 to 150 but what is commonly used is 75 millimeters so now that we've explained the section of the beam of the column the next thing is to show the arrangement of reinforcement so the arrangement of reinforcement is quite easy so this is the starter bar you can see that the starter bar starts from the foundation and goes up so this is trying to show the number of reinforcement this is 4016 meaning that you have four number of reinforcement 
and O2 is the bar mark. Then another thing you also note is the share links. The links is actually denoted by these two lines showing that it starts from here and ends here. So we have six number, the size is 10 mm, the bar mark is one, and the spacing of the share links is 175. All the parameter actually depends on the design. Then the next thing is the, the next floor. The next floor is also have a 16 number of, four number of Y16, but in this case, the bar mark is five. So if you look at this cross section that we caught, section 3A, 3A. So 3A, 3A is here. This actually shows the arrangement of those reinforcement. So we have four number of reinforcement at each corner. Then this O5 is denoting the bar mark of those longitudinal reinforcement. O5, O5, and you have the size of the reinforcement and also with the cross section, you can see the shape of the share links. These share links actually depends. We have one leg, two leg, three leg, four leg, depending on the size of the column most of the time. Then another important thing I would like to show you is the size of this lapping length. You can see that after we place the starter bar that ranges from the foundation and extend into the first, in, into the ground floor, then we now place another reinforcement that, that runs from the start of the column kicker and extend into the next floor. So the length of this, of this lapping as I've told you in the first part of this section is taken as 50D because Coulomb is a compression member. Actually, that 50D is not constant. It depends on the size of strength of reinforcement and the compressive strength of your concrete. This is actually given in the code. So, but for the purpose of this video, we are using 50D. So if you multiply 50 by the diameter of reinforcement that was provided was 16. So 50 times 16, we give you 800 and that is why the lapping length here is 800 so the same thing goes for this you see we have 16 number of reinforcement we have a uh, 16 number but in case in which you want to lap reinforcement of different diameter so according to the code what is important is for you to lap using the size of the the lowest the smaller reinforcement so let's say in this case i have 20 diameter of reinforcement at the bottom here and here i have 16. according to the code i will lap my lap length is going to be based on the smaller size so the lap length is going to be 800 but let's say i have 20 diameter of reinforcement here 20 here so the lap length is going to be 50 times 20 that is going to be one meters then another important thing is the sizing of the column which is 225 by 225 must be indicated in the detailing then you should also indicate the the start and end of the shear links so this this horizontal line shows where the shear link started from and where it ends so the number is 15 and then the spacing of the share links is 175. So this links is what is shown in the cross section. So this is how to detail column. Column are detail floor by floor. You can see that a single reinforcement for one of the floor was not, was not used straight. So what we did is we detailed the, the starter part of the column first. Then we lap it with another reinforcement that starts from the kicker and extend to the next reinforcement by the lap length so that is how column is done column is done floor by floor so this is a typical detailing of column reinforcement if you find this video helpful kindly hit the subscribe button you can like this video share with it share it with your friends so that they can also learn from it thank you see you in the next one